Yo, what is up guys? Joker bringing you another video. This is going to be a tips and tricks video of things that I've figured out now that I am 45 hours into once human. I am currently level 43 and in the story progression, I'm literally just waiting for time to pass right there there's nothing else i can really do besides hit level 50 and like min max my gear so i figured uh, i'd go ahead and throw out like a tips and tricks video for new players coming into once human a couple of things that should help you out quite a bit um things like i wish i knew right so let's get started the first thing that you're going to want to look out for and make sure that you get done is the automation, right? My previous video, I went ahead and I showed you how to get the Rain Man, how to get the Digger Boy, and how to get the Beaver. And these are going to be really the first deviants that you want to go out of your way to actually obtain because the fact that they can manage your base for you while you go out and explore the world is just such a huge quality of life it speeds up uh, progress significantly it makes it so you don't have to go out and gather these resources or manage your crops on your own it's just a significant quality of life that everyone really really needs especially starting out that way you don't have to waste your time gathering those on your own the next thing that i want to bring up is going to be the mimetic specializations right you get one of these every five levels and these are incredibly strong special effects however you can only change these five times per league and as of right now i think i only have two or three of my respects available and i have 45 hours in the game so majority of players are only probably going to get like two or three of the respects right unless they play out the full season so with these choose things that you would like things that you would think are fun um if there's any guides that say like, oh, this is the best thing to do, don't follow any kind of guide because this is a choice that you really can't take back. You only get five respects in the season. So go ahead and choose whatever is a cool looking or fun looking to you. Uh, if you're playing in a team, something that you can do is you can uh you can spread it out right you can have a builder a gatherer a crafter right a cooker that way you still get to benefit from everything without having to have fomo of like missing out right because someone can have a star chef ability they can carry all the food for your team that way you don't have to worry about stuff like that you can have designated crafters that way you get more bang for your buck you have some people go gather the stuff and then you hand it over to the crafter um what i'm essentially just trying to say is uh choose what you think looks fun the third thing that i want to go over is going to be weapons and weapon progression right there's no reason to really use a gun over a melee weapon or a crossbow early on because the ammo is insanely expensive crafting ammo you need gunpowder and metal right gunpowder is going to be eating up a lot of acid and acid is not only not easy to farm it is used in late game and it is going to be one of the things that bottlenecks you significantly late game it's used in both tungsten and aluminum and you need a lot of it when it comes to late game i wish i wouldn't have made as many bullets as i made before i swapped over my crossbow i mean i can go ahead and show you the damage that i have with my crossbow if you feel like uh potentially it's going to be lacking as compared to a gun right so we just go ahead and like 
So the damage is there. The damage wouldn't be better if I was using a gun and even better when I'm using a bow and arrows, I'm able to go ahead and pick my arrows back up. So I'm not losing anything. I'm dealing the same amount of damage, but I'm giving myself a renewable resource and not having to waste my materials. The fourth thing that I want to go over is the food system in Once Human. I feel like it is an incredibly powerful to the point where in your memetics, it's probably some of the first points that you're going to want to take, right? You're going to want to probably get down to water storage and dishes as early as you can. I'm 100% serious on this because these food dishes are incredible incredibly strong. If you don't believe me, I can show you a couple of examples right here, right? Not only is it giving me an HP boost and a resistance boost, we have other things like this that are giving me crit damage boost, fire rate damage boost. The food that I'm currently using heals me naturally over time on top of giving me a 10% HP boost. And then um, there is like some insanely broken dishes. I have a refrigerator full of food that I was using early on and I'll showcase like some of the effects, right? So like better stamina, better damage, better resistances, right? Dishes provide a sanity restoring bonus. So essentially this restores my sanity over time. I don't have to waste additional resources or additional medicines to make up for that. If we go over to my stove, I can also show you some recipes that I've found. So there is a bacon burger that makes one hit mining. There is a ghost cookie that turns me invisible. There is a um, 15% damage buff against bosses. And this would go ahead and have additional benefits, right? Right now it's saying 50 uh, plus 50 to max HP, but that's because I'm using pork. If I was to use one of the other meats like the bear meat that I was using to make my current meal, I would go ahead and have a 100% extra 100%, sorry, plus 100 extra HP. And if you take a look at some of these, the benefits that you can get from this, 20% capture chance on deviance, right? That's just fucking insane. Higher carry load. And it, my all-time favorite that I haven't unlocked yet, and I'm looking forward to testing it as soon as I can, is going to be this, right? Canned seafood in oil. Stroke of luck. Use for a chance to get 66, 666, or 6,666 increased yield on the final strike of mining. If you pair this with something like the electric weapons where you're mining items in seconds, then you're going to get insane amounts of resources instantly. The fifth thing that I want to address is the only piece of gear that I feel like you should actually prioritize. And this is going to be your gloves because the correlation between your gloves and because there's a correlation between your gloves and your deviant capture rate. As you can see, deviant capture, high capture chance for deviants level four and below. This means that when I see a deviant out in the wild, 85%, no, actually 100% of the deviants that I've seen in the wild are under level four. I have not seen a deviant over level four yet. And with that capture rate being around 80%, I'm able to go ahead and just farm de deviants as I see fit, right? Because I don't have to worry about risking failure. I'm able to go ahead and go to any of the deviant spawns, any of the static ones, and capture them almost 100% guaranteed because my capture chance is uh, 80%. And on the gloves, like it says, any deviant under level two, I have a chance for it to be a 
100% capture rate. So make sure if you're not upgrading your other gear for whatever reason, at the very least, you are upgrading your gloves every chance you get. You want to know something cool? While I was editing uh, the video, I realized the last half of the clips for my tips and tricks uh, was muted somehow. So that's super dope. I get to go ahead and <laughs> retake shots that took me like 20 to 40 minutes. Awesome. But let's get into it. So while we're talking about gear let's talk about gear gear itself has the three different um types of ranks right so there is going to be a base blueprint rank which is going to increase the star level of an item which increases its base damage there is going to be the tier of an item which does essentially the same thing uh, the star level just gives you an overall higher base damage to work with the uh, tier is going to be what changes the crafting material required as well as the energy link required right like if we look at this base pistol and we go ahead and we craft one up you'll see that it has the uh, power level of 201, right? And it has 102 damage. If we look at a tier two weapon, it has 158 uh, base damage and it takes higher quality materials to actually craft. Armor is somewhat the same where the tier is going to increase all of the stats. That's why I say somewhat and not exactly. You get more benefit, in my opinion, from upgrading the tier of armor than you do for upgrading the tier of the weapon because you get HP, pollution resistance, and pH, uh, PSI intensity as opposed to just getting flat damage. The third thing is going to be calibration. And this is going to increase the base damage and base stats of items once again. This is going to be like increasing the item level, right? You have the stars, you have the tier, and then you have the calibration, which is essentially the item level with calibration that is what is going to unlock additional perks and uh the calibration um which my god the calibration attributes as you can see here on my gun i have a fire rate of plus 25 percent i have magazine capacity of plus 40 and attack of minus 15. as you can see on this other gun that i just crafted it only has, uh, it, it doesn't have anything, right? And as you can see, the lower two calibration attributes are actually locked. So how gear progression in Once Human is going to look for you as a new player is you are going to make a tier one weapon. Then you are going to calibrate it halfway even though half white does not give you the first calibration attribute. The reason why is because this is going to put your weapon and gear on a middle ground between tier one and tier two. Then you're going to go ahead. Once you reach the point to mine and make the materials for the tier two, you're going to make the tier two. You're going to come over to your disassembly bench and you're going to throw your tier one in there and it's going to give you your resources back the reason why you don't want to up the calibration past the halfway point is because at that point it's going to start eating stardust source right which is more of a finite resource and it is harder to get especially 
late game when you have weapons here like my crossbow that I'm trying to max out. It's literally, I think, like 2,000 or something Stardust Source to get this to uh, Weapon Calibration 10. However, Weapon Calibration 10 is going to unlock a base crit chance of plus 4. So it is worth it for me to try to reach that. Another thing to know about gear is it does take Energy Link to craft. So early on, before you have the memetic specialization for um, the combo chipset or the ability to make gold and silver bars, you're going to want to choose maybe one, maybe two weapons to specialize in, right? You don't want to keep crafting stuff because prior to having a steady source of energy link, it is going to be what bottlenecks you, right? You are going to be hard capped because you use energy link to learn memetics as well. And it will get to a point where you have to choose between unlocking uh, uh, unlocking the memetic uh, recipes and upgrading your gear. Nine times out of 10, you're going to want to use it on your memetics tree so your gear will be falling behind because you can find gear out in the world while you're looting stuff and it can be fairly decent. It'll be named with these random Chinese names, right? And all you have to go ahead and do is use them until you get more... Uh, until you get more energy link these weapons that you find in the wild do serve a purpose do not just get rid of them they do have a purpose and that is going to be for the calibration blueprints these are one-time use ability scrolls essentially where they go ahead and they are going to change what your weapon can do they do have different rarities and different tiers of effects as you can see the shotgun blueprint that i have is um legendary and it increases my crit rate by 7.6 percent it's kind of a low roll but it is a one-time use so you do want to save your calibration blueprints and not actually waste them that is like a super brief overcap of gear. Gear really deserves its own video because as you can see, I was speed running it and that still took me seven minutes. So I may make another video just dedicated to exclusively gear. The next thing is going to be gravity and how that works. So early on in the memetics skill tree, you are able to make a rainwater collection system and a water storage tank. You want to do this because not only does it help with your cooking recipes, it's going to sustain you an infinite amount of water that you don't have to collect. Just like the first tip, anything that you can automate, you really want to. So you're going to set up your rainwater collectors on a higher ground and then you're going to connect a pipe down to these. These water tanks are going to collect all of your water for you, but they have one more ability. These are kind of facing the wrong direction, I just noticed, so you can't really see it but it has a secondary spout so you can automate it even further once you have things like the water filter you're able to connect a pipe from the water tank to the water filter and as you can see it's always at a hundred it's constantly draining the water out of there reason why you're going to want the purified water the pure water is you can use it for ice at a refrigerator which once again is useful for recipes and i think it has some other uses as well i can't think of off the top of my head but for whatever reason you cannot connect the water purifier to the refrigerator 
you cannot connect the water tank to the refrigerator. I don't know if I'm missing something, but you just cannot connect those. But that, that's a super brief tip. Just gravity has water flow down and you can connect a ton of things. I guess another good reference I can show you is connections with your electronics as well. You can run wires through them and it will go ahead and share power as opposed to having to connect everything individually. How I have it set up is I have a cord connecting these four and then this one is connected to this one, right? To this light and then this light is what's giving the power to all of my other lights. It just saves time in me having to run a million cords. And that really is the last thing that I can think of for a new player tips and tricks. I can't really think of anything else that a new player would need to know to be successful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment and I'll, down in the comments and I'll definitely go ahead and go down there and respond. I hope this video does help you out. Uh, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to stay up to date with this and future content. And until next time, take care.